what we saw at the Royal Rumble was so great from the bloodline because it left you desperately eager to find out what's going to happen next, but it also gave you a payoff. So often in storytelling, we're trying to keep people watching so much that we don't pay things off. And ultimately, when there's not a payoff, you can do as many cliffhangers as you want. People are going to lose interest. We got to, one of the biggest payoffs to an angle that WWE has ever given to us. It starts, and, and, and what's so great about this is that you can look at it from multiple perspectives. So the story is that Kevin Owens and Roman Reigns are in there together, and, and Kevin Owens is a challenge. Roman Reigns is having trouble. The referee is knocked out. Kevin Owens gets a what would have been a pinfall victory. I mean, that's arguable. I've always thought that when people go for the cover, but there's no referee, and the audience can chant one, two, three, and you go, it would have been a pin. Maybe, but if Roman Reigns knows there's no referee, he's not going to kick out anyway. It's like when somebody taps out, but the referee doesn't see it. If that person knew that the referee wasn't looking, they might just be tapping out so that their opponent takes the hold off. They might not actually be saying, hey, I would have been tapping out. But, I mean, just logically speaking, when you think about this from, from, a, from a, a place of logic, but Roman goes, Roman gets Kevin Owens down. He goes, okay, I'm going to need a chair. Sami Zayn hesitates. Roman is furious, but Sami Zayn hesitates. He's not sure if he wants Roman to hit his lifelong best friend with a chair, but he does pass the chair in. Roman is, regardless of the chair, able to hit a spear, and Roman Reigns beats Kevin Owens. Now, this is where it gets interesting. They, and when I say they, I mean the bloodline, the Usos, Solo, Roman, beat down Kevin Owens in a way that was not quite typical for what we see in WWE. It felt much more like a gang beating than it did a wrestling beating. It felt like they were teaching Kevin Owens a lesson for everybody that wants to step to the tribal chief. This is what you're going to get. Roman goes to hit, he handcuffs Kevin Owens to the ropes. Kevin Owens is helpless. He's already gotten this post-match beating. Roman goes to hit Kevin Owens with a, with a steel chair. Sammy steps in front of Roman and says, don't do it. Roman goes, what? And Roman is great here because he goes, I gave you everything. I gave you everything. All of this I, I, is because of me. You want to go back to doing your jackass bullshit, then go do that. But I gave you all this. You don't want to hit, you don't want me to hit Kevin? You Then you do it. You hit Kevin then. And Roman turns his back to Sammy and Sammy winds up and instead of hitting Kevin Owens, he lays out the tribal chief, Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns is down. Jay Uso is screaming at Sammy Zayn. Why? Why would you do this? Why would you do that? I thought you were my friend. Jimmy Uso kicks Sammy Zayn in the face, knocks him down. Solo Sokoa, Jimmy Uso beat him down. Roman Reigns starts wailing on him with a chair. Jay Uso leaves. And if you thought a, a, a gang like beatdown of Kevin Owens was severe, you haven't seen anything until you've seen the beating that Sami Zayn took. Now, why did this happen and who's to blame? Let's get into these characters, okay? Let's look at it because the beauty of this is. You've got three different perspectives and three different perspectives that are all going to have their own narrative and that are all going to have to be settled. We'll start with Sami Zayn. I think most of the people are looking at this through the eyes of Sami Zayn because Sami Zayn represents us in the sense that in this scenario, Sami Zayn is the good guy. Sami Zayn is the hero. The reaction that Sami Zayn got when he laid out Roman Reigns with that chair. I mean, it was like nothing. It's the Royal Rumble. It's a show built for reactions. There is a pop every 90 seconds 
for 30 sets of 90 seconds. Twice. 60 pops earlier just that night. And that was, I mean, it's the biggest pop in Royal Rumble history, right? It's one of the biggest pops ever. People can't believe it. That's the payoff that I'm talking about. But people can't believe it, and they're so happy. They're so happy that Sammy finally stood up for himself. They're chanting for Sammy. They're chanting F.U. Roman to close the show. And they're chanting F.U. to Roman, and they're not doing it in a way that, that we see these days in wrestling. They're not doing it in a way where they're chanting for the cool bad guy, where it's fun to chant for the cool bad guy, which is what people have been doing for Roman sometimes, right? We love Roman, but we'll boo him, but we love him. Roman got real heat. Roman got real heel booze. And Sammy got real baby face cheers. That's what made one of the things that makes this angle so incredible. We're going, we're not, we're not reinventing the wheel. We're just holding it up and we are rolling better than we've ever rolled before. Because it's the best goddamn wheel I've seen in 20 years. It's incredible. It's wrestling 101. Cheer for the good guy. What do we always say? Going back to not Sam wrestling, you know, the first year. Boo the bad guy. So from Sami Zayn's perspective, let's talk about the different perspectives that these characters have. From Sami Zayn's perspective, he's sitting there, right? And even though Kevin Owens and Roman Reigns are rivals, his friendship with Kevin Owens, not only has it not been respected by Roman Reigns, but it's been a, a negative. It's been something that Roman Reigns has counted against Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn has spent months proving his loyalty to Roman Reigns. And when you are loyal to somebody and they expect you to keep proving it, there is very little that is more insulting. If you have a friend and they keep making you prove that you're really their friend, they can't just accept you and go, of course you're my friend. You're not going to be their friend much longer. That's the situation that Sammy found himself in. And he's going like, all I'm doing is proving it to this guy. Even going back to the trial, when Solo Sokoa was ready to jam his thumb through the neck of Sami Zayn as Sami's punishment, Sami sat there ready to take it. He didn't fight Solo Sokoa because he was loyal to the bloodline. He threw the chair in. Roman asked for the chair. And yeah, he hesitated because it's a lot. It's traumatic. But he threw the chair in to Roman Reigns. And when Roman Reigns, when he, when he finally said enough is enough, he didn't stop Roman from beating Kevin. He didn't stop the, the, the bloodline from giving Kevin a beatdown. But when it got to a place where it was pure savagery, he stopped Roman and said, okay, like, haven't we made our point? And then Roman starts screaming at him. Do you want to go back to doing jackass shit? All the success that Sami Zayn had in the second half, second, I mean, honestly, the, the last uh, uh, three quarters of 2022, Roman is now taking credit for it. He's not saying, I got you to a place where you could earn what you've gotten. He's saying, I gave it to you. Everything that you have, I gave to you. That discredits everything that Sami Zayn has done. That makes it so that Sammy did nothing and that Roman handed him everything. If he doesn't do what Roman says, he's got nothing. That discredits all of Sami Zayn's work. And in that moment, the fact that after all this, after everything that Sammy has done for Roman, that Roman is ready to just throw it all away after everything Sammy has done for Roman Roman's gonna sit here and go if you don't do this 
You're it, 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 nothing counts. You're out. You're gone. And Sammy's like, well, then why do I keep breaking my back if it's not building me any credit? If, it, if none of it has enough value, the Roman just 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 trusts me. It's not happening. And so Roman turns around and and Sammy in this in this moment that has been building week after week, month after month, where Roman has been mentally torturing this person who is an accomplished professional wrestler, multi-time champion in the WWE, multi-time champion outside of the WWE. And Roman is sitting there and 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 for Weeks now, months, Sammy has had to deal with people questioning his loyalty and saying, prove it, prove that you're loyal, prove that you're good enough. Well, enough is enough. Sammy hits Roman with one strike and immediately, immediately turns around to Jay because that's the bond that's really grown. Sammy worked so hard to prove to Jay that he was his friend. Immediately, all Sammy could think about when he laid out the tribal chief was that he had upset his friend because Sammy is a, a person who comes from the heart. That's the whole character. Sammy is a heartfelt character. And he turns to Jey Uso, I'm sorry. I had to do, I, I just, I can't keep doing this. I'm sorry. He's apologizing to Jay, apologizing to Jay. And as he's apologizing, he catches that boot from Jimmy. And that's when it was like, no, dude, there is, there's no way. You can't take out the leader of a gang in front of the rest of the gang. Now you're done for. And they put the boots to him and they beat him down. And the tribal chief stands strong. Now let's look at this from Roman Reigns' perspective. On the other side of things, Roman Reigns is the Michael Jordan of WWE in the sense that the idea that you would call this guy a jerk when just through his performance, he has raised all boats. He's brought the tide higher than it's been in a long time. He's put food on the plates of everyone. And the idea that anyone would insult Roman, would question Roman. What have you done that would put you in a position where you should be questioning Roman Reigns? Can you, simp can you justify the idea that you would know better than Roman Reigns? Because if you knew better than Roman, you would have done what Roman's done and continues to do. And this, this is the bane of Roman's existence. All he wants is loyalty. Roman has figured out how to do this. Roman is fully prepared to create great lives for everyone around him. All they have to do is not get in the way and do as he says so that he's in a position where they can all eat better. Anybody questioning Roman or not doing what he says, isn't it, it's not that it's just bad for Roman. It upsets the whole foundation of the group. So Roman sticks to his blood. Roman sticks to his family. These are the people that understand. And these are the people that I've helped the most. And these are the people that are most loyal to me. Along comes Sami Zayn. And Roman's cousin, who's like a brother to him, is saying he's not one of us. He's not one of us. Don't let this guy in. And Roman is going, let's give him a shot. Let's give him a shot. And Roman, who lives in this place that Paul Heyman has dubbed the island of relevancy, makes Sami Zayn more relevant than he has ever been. The hottest thing in the entire industry is the bloodline. And Roman allows Sami Zayn to be a part of it. 
And all Roman asks for is that Sammy does what's right for the team. Michael Jordan would go to the Chicago Bulls and he'd say, here's exactly what we need to do to win. And we will win that sixth champ, that fifth championship, that sixth championship. This is what we need to do. Follow what I say. And the idea that anybody on that court would question Jordan? It's crazy. It's insulting. It's disrespectful. And it's counterproductive to the goal of the entire team. Jordan doesn't have to justify why he's saying do this. If he's saying it, clearly there's a reason. Let's do that. That's who Roman Reigns is. So the idea that we get to this match and Sammy is even wondering because Kevin Owens has been a thorn in Roman Reigns' side. Kevin Owens could just back off. Roman Reigns is not hunting down Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens is attempting to hunt down Roman Reigns. So it's like, Sammy, I understand you don't want me beating up your friend. But tell your friend to stop putting his nose in our business then. If he's not, that's his decision. And I know that's your boy, but it's called the bloodline. If you want to be a part of our bloodline, that's where the, the line is. So we get to the match and Roman asks for a chair. And already the fact that Sammy's hesitant at all to throw the chair in is like, what is this? Why do I have you out here? This isn't a, 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 a committee. I'm the one in the ring. I'm the one that's creating the legacy. I'm the one that's creating this record title reign that hasn't been done. And you're going to sit there and wonder, I don't know, should we really use a chair? That's not what you're here to do. You're here to stand near a chair. And when I say chair, you throw me two. So already it, it's, it's a nuisance. Now, Kevin Owens has been a thorn in Roman Reigns' side for weeks. Weeks. He interrupted, he came out of nowhere during the contract signing and pop-up power-bombed Roman Reigns through a table. You think that's going to go unanswered? We didn't answer that simply by winning a match. We have to teach a lesson. There is no reason why anybody in that locker room should think that they can ever come out and power bomb Roman Reigns through a table when he's not looking. So how do we get that message across? We make Kevin Owens a different person when he leaves. We teach Kevin Owens a lesson in front of the world. Roman goes to swing that chair at the handcuffed Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn steps in the way. This was not mental torture for Sami Zayn. Roman did not ask Sami Zayn to prove anything. Roman did not ask Sami Zayn to hit Kevin Owens with that chair until Sami Zayn interrupted him. Then, now that you've interrupted me, I'm angry. I'm going to tell you exactly the spot that I've given you as compared to what you did before. And now, oh, you don't think I should hit Kevin Owens with a chair? Well, Kevin Owens is getting hit with a chair. So if I can't do it, you do it then. Oh, I shouldn't question your loyalty? Because I'm pretty sure that you just stepped in front of me doing what I thought was right. And if you're telling me, the tribal chief, that what I'm doing isn't right, then I question your judgment. So now you don't want me to hit him? I wasn't going to ask you to hit him. But you got involved. So now that you're involved, you do it. Roman Reigns turns around. And Sami Zayn hits him in the back with a steel chair. Roman Reigns goes down and the look on his face, and I've been talking for months about the fact that Roman's ability to convey story with his facial expressions is second to none. He's got the best facial expressions in the business right now. Roman has this look of pain on his face where the physical pain of being hit with the chair and knocked to the ground is secondary to the betrayal that he feels from Sami Zayn. 
And the reason that he feels betrayal from Sami Zayn is even the framing of what just happened is exactly the situation that he found himself in with Seth Rollins. The last time he gave somebody that wasn't his blood the trust that he gave Sami Zayn, it was Seth Rollins in The Shield. And when Roman had his back to Seth, Seth took Roman out with a steel chair. Roman opens that trust once more to a person that's not his blood. It's Sami Zayn. And he hits him exactly the same way that Seth Rollins did. And it all comes flooding back. And in that face, you can see my back hurts from getting hit with a chair. After everything I've done for Sammy, how could he do this to me? How could I put myself in this position again? And I can't believe Sammy just made me do what I'm about to do to him. And that's when Roman turns around. I mean, Sammy has been working for months to try to become a, a, a full-time oos, to try to fully be inducted into the bloodline. If being a full-time part of the bloodline is that big of a deal, getting thrown out of the bloodline should be as big of a deal. And that's why Sammy Zayn caught the beat down that he did. Again, you send that message. You send that message to everybody saying, you think that this is what you can do to a person who calls himself the head of the table? Oh, no, no. I'm a lion. You can't take steak away from me. And that's when Sammy catches that beatdown. Sammy left Roman with literally no choice after Roman put Sammy in a position that Sammy had put himself into. Roman only did that because Sammy got involved. Sammy made a fool out of Roman Reigns. A fool for allowing Sammy to benefit off of what Roman has built, off of what Roman's family has built. Sammy has benefited from that for months, and now, now, he turns his back on him. Now he does to him the most painful thing that he could do, the same thing Seth Rollins did to him. That's how you treat Roman Reigns? No wonder Roman is mad. And then you go to Jey Uso. And Jey Uso is sitting there. And he's going, I can't believe this. I can't believe, and, 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 and everything comes flooding back. Because Jey Uso had gotten to this point where for, for so long, he didn't want Sami Zayn in the bloodline. He didn't trust Sami Zayn. Because for every, every bit of mental torture that Sami Zayn has been a victim of, Jey Uso was a victim of 10 times that torture. Jey Uso was the first member of the bloodline that in order to get in had to be beaten down mentally by Roman Reigns. The whole bloodline started with multiple pay-per-view matches, Roman Reigns versus Jey Uso. And Roman Reigns just, just, just doing things to his psyche that for the character are irreversible. November comes along, War Games Survivor Series. A great angle there too. And Jay finally accepts Sammy wholeheartedly and fully, without question. To the point where we get all the way to Raw 30 and the trial of Sami Zayn, he's found guilty and Jay's the one that saves Sammy. Jay's the one that says, no, you guys don't understand. Give him another chance. Don't Samoan spike this guy out of the bloodline. And Jay witnesses Sammy turning on Roman. And Jay flashes back to all the mental torture that he had to deal with. All the accusations of not being loyal to Roman that he had to deal with. Now... The person that he fought for, the person that he vouched for, turned on Roman Reigns. Now, after all this, 
Roman was right. Sammy was guilty. And quite frankly, Jay has to realize that he was right before November. He was finally broken. He finally switched. And Sammy proved that to be a, a poor choice for Jay. Unless, unless Jay sees it the other way. We don't know where Jay stands. Unless Jay sees it the other way because he walked out. Maybe, maybe Jay sees it in a way where he knows what Roman is doing to Sammy. He knows the mental torture and abuse that Roman is putting Sammy through. And he's sitting there going, I, I know the breaking point that you were just driven to. And I witnessed it break. And I can't be a part of this anymore. We don't know if Jay left because he's mad at Roman Reigns in the bloodline. He might have left because he was too disgusted to see Sami Zayn anymore. Or he might have left just because this is all too complicated. I can't even be a part of this situation anymore. But that's Jay's perspective. We've got all of this going on with a segment that after two Royal Rumble matches, a lights out match, I mean, a, a pitch black match, a universal, undisputed universal WWE championship match, all of this, an angle that's so strong, that is what we're left with everybody talking about. 